Welcome to the Rustic Garden. What I thought I would do today, it's actually Monday, it's the evening, I just got home from work. I'm going to start a new series called KISS, K-I-S, Keep It Simple. The whole purpose behind it is to help new gardeners, and if you're just getting started and been doing it a couple years, to really get a tomato plant growing or get a vegetable growing. And hopefully if you watch some of my videos, and I show you how to make um, the potting mixes, how to use peat moss, and it can get a little bit complicated if you're just getting started. So today, I want to start with how to grow a cherry tomato in a 10 gallon container. And I'll go over all the pieces in uh, constructing the container and what you need to do. And this will probably be a three part series where we'll do some tending, um, pruning, and all that kind of stuff and harvesting. But to get started, this is about a 10 gallon container. I just got it at Home Depot. It was actually only $9, it was on sale. So right now is a great time to find a lot of things on sale. We're going to fill it with plain old garden soil. So to keep it simple, any product that says garden soil on it, you can use. It has a lot of peat moss in it, a lot of organic matter, and that will get your container started. So you don't need to go and make anything fancy. Just go look for any product that says garden soil. Before you get started, I also want to put the hole right in the side, two inches up. This is going to create a water reservoir. So when you water, some water will fill in here. It's not going to create root rot or anything for your tomato plant. It's going to be too hot in June, July, August. So any water that's sitting in there, you know, the water's going to evaporate off the top. That water will quickly wick up through the rest of the soil and it gives you a little bit of play area. Now, I used to talk about doing this in a five gallon container. You can do it. But when you're growing a tomato plant or pepper plants in five gallon containers or any vegetables, you're going to have to water more. So to keep it simple, a 10 gallon container gives you more room for wiggling around watering. So if you have to go away for a day or two, you don't have to over worry. So let's get started with the soil. Again, any garden soil works. This was on sale, it was $2.50 a bag. It has some fertilizer in it. I'm gonna go over organic fertilizers and processed fertilizers. fertilizers. I'm not an organic gardener. I don't use chemical insecticides except on occasion, and that might be seven dust. And I use both processed fertilizers, chemical fertilizers, and organic fertilizers. So, first bag fills it up about halfway. We're going to go with the tablespoon. And the whole key for fertilizing is going to be five, five, five. And that's how I want to keep it simple. Nitrogen five, phosphorus five, potassium five. Try and keep the N, P, and K at about a 555. Five, five. Plus or minus one or two is perfectly fine. This is a 546 organic fertilizer. And we're going to put, sprinkle in two tablespoons. And this is a chemical fertilizer. It's processed by human beings and it's a 91212. That's too high. So instead of putting in Two scoops like I did with this, I'm just going to do one. And that pretty much cuts it in half. So your 9, 12, 12 becomes a four and a half, a six, a six. These are both slow release fertilizers. So what we're mixing into here is about a 555 five, NPK, give or take, plus or minus one, and it's a slow release. We're going to use water solubles to take care of the plants while they're growing. Mix in those fertilizers well right into the soil. You don't want to ever set your plant root ball on any fertilizer, processed or organic, that you put into the planting hole. So now we got to finish this off. This was $3 a bag on sale. So it's going to take about one and a half, well, almost two bags to fill it up. Now this is a garden soil too. It has a lot of composted wood in there, a lot of peat moss. That's perfect for containers. It's nice and loose and all the wood in the peat moss will hold water and that's what you want. So we have some fertilizer in the bottom. It was two scoops of the organic, one scoop of the processed fertilizer and we're going to put in a cherry tomato and this is all going to be about how to simply grow a cherry tomato in about a 10 gallon container. We're going to plant it to this depth. It will root out across the top. 
This is something that I started indoors and you can check out my videos if you want to do that next year. Dig the hole deep enough that you can bury it about a third of the way. And that will get your cherry tomatoes set up. I also recommend, and you saw I left about an inch or so, mulch the top off. This bag of mulch was two dollars, or actually was three dollars and twenty-five cents. I use the shredded hardwood or the shredded Caesar, Caesar, <laughs> shredded cedar mix. This will keep moisture in, and that's really going to be the most difficult thing growing a tomato in a container and other vegetables is keeping the moisture in. If you let the entire soil dry out just once, it damages the plant so much it's really going to hurt production. So we have the cherry tomato set up. Let me just grab a steak. And just drop a steak in. The cherry tomatoes are going to grow really quickly. This is just a starting steak. I'll tie this to it after the video. Once it gets to this size, I'll be doing the next video and showing you really how to stake it up. Now, one thing that tomatoes do is they suck the life out of the container soil. So you're going to have to feed this, again, to keep it simple, every 10 to 14 days with a water-soluble fertilizer. Let's start with the chemical ones that are processed. This is a 15-30-15 fertilizer. That's too much. So cut it in half. It's a 7.5, 15, 7.5, still too much. Cut it down to a quarter strength. So it'll be a quarter strength per gallon of water and you can use that in there if you want to. So this is another chemical fertilizer. It's an 18, 18, 21. Again, that's too high. Cut it in half. You get a 9, 9, uh, what's that? 10.5. So again, you'd use a quarter strength of this to get it to that 5, 5, 5 level. And you're going to be watering this again, or watering it, you're going to be feeding it every 10 to 14 days through the whole life cycle of your tomato plant. Now, I like to use the miracle Grow or this expert garden product to start while the tomato is growing because it has all kinds of micronutrients in there, all six of the macronutrients, um, the N, P, and K, of course. But it helps set up your soil. The one thing that's different between the soil in the container and the soil in your garden is there's not a lot of soil life in here. There's not a lot of nutrients in here. So you're not really harming soil life by using the chemical fertilizers. So go ahead and use them if you feel comfortable. If you don't, stick with the organic fertilizers. And once this gets to a good size, I'll be switching over to Job's, which is a great organic fertilizer. And this is a 5-2-3. Now because it's close to that 5-5-5, five, 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 you're not going to need to cut this in half or cut it into a quarter. Just use this at full strength in one gallon of water, which is one tablespoon. When you're going to feed the plant, after you set up the solution, just soak the leaves for a couple of seconds and then soak the soil enough for, you know, in your mind, for the water and the solution to drip down to here. You don't want to fill it up down in the bottom. Just enough to sink in. <coughs> Excuse me. I swallowed a bug. Just enough for the solution to sink down into the soil and that will feed your tomato plant. And again, you're gonna do this every 10 to 14 days. So this will probably be a three-part series. We'll come back when this is bigger. We'll talk more about disease prevention, pruning, and I'll just take you through the whole process of getting it into the container, and then hopefully we get to harvest. And this is, by the way, is a Matt's Wild Cherry, if I didn't mention it. It's a delicious, small cherry tomato um, that really needs the heat to grow. So just a side note, if you ever get Matt's Wild Cherry, if you're trying to germinate it with the other tomatoes at 70 or 80 degrees inside, it won't germinate. Until it gets up into the higher 80s and even 90s, these seeds don't pop. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out my blog at www.thrustedgarden.blogspot.com and also check out my YouTube videos. Thanks.